Hi, everybody. Hi. I am Stephanie Lugo, one half of the Lugos here at my home group. Uh, my husband had been agents here since January of 2015 after we left our nine to fives in 2014. We escaped corporate finance once and for all, hopefully. And uh, in 2015, we started our flipping business. We, in 12 months, replaced our corporate income from real estate, very exciting. And ever since then, it's been a lot of fun. So now, I, along with the flipping and real estate stuff, I really love teaching. So thank you for being here to hear from me today. So today, I want to talk about the power of lifetime value with clients. And it's a little bit of a database class, so we're gonna get into some of that, but it's gonna be good. So no matter what stage you are at your business, these concepts I'm gonna share today will be able to, to be applied to what you've got going on. So one thing that we love about real estate is that we kind of have this unique opportunity to decide what we want our business and lifestyle to look like, and then build in the systems to accommodate that, right? But key word is always systems. And so I want to start with a question. Are you relying on luck or systems in your business? So when we think about leads that come in from whatever source, a lot of times they just, they don't buy right away. You don't pick up the phone, cold call a lead, and they're ready to go. Not usually, they take a few months to warm up. Maybe they need to deal with some pre-qualification issues, whatever, but it takes some time to get them running. And that is, that's just kind of running off of luck. And that's just no way to scale a business. That's no way to scale a business to six figures and beyond, right? You have to have systems in your business. You have to have repeatable, scalable actions that produce similar times, similar favorable results time over time again, right? And the key here is they have to be delegatable, right? You have to be able to have these so nailed down that somebody could come in, step in your place, and know exactly what to do to move your business along. What happens is when we're dealing with luck, when we're kind of just hoping that we get that quick sale, get a good lead that comes to an open house by chance, we end up dealing with kind of wishy-washy, semi-committed leads, right, who don't really care about you, they just want to get in the house, or they just want to sell their house as quickly as they can for as little money, and they just have to tolerate you, they don't want to pay you anyway. When you have systems, you get this opportunity to really tailor this great client experience. And what that results in is committed, ravenous fans who love working with you, and they can't wait to work with you again in the future. They can't wait to refer their friends to you, and they hope to see you again in, in the meantime, you know? Maybe that relationship, hopefully, continues on past close. That's always, always the goal. So this all starts with the client experience. If you think about big brands, they spend so much time and money investing into their client experience. Like, you know those glass Coke bottles when you have a Coke? Mm -hmm. And it's cold and you pick it up and you just like know how that feels when you have it in your hand. And then when you crack the top off, there's that little sound, it's like and you know it's bubbly and you know it's gonna be super refreshing. Millions of dollars of research went into that moment for you. And you know, like when I'm telling you what this is, you can repeat that feeling in your mind. So in real estate, it's different. We don't have a physical product. We're giving services. But it's how we treat a client before, during, and long after a transaction via our database. So we have to think about everything that happens from the moment we get a lead to the moment we close that and how we stay in touch with them later, and that's what's going to build those long-term relationships that are going to continue to bring in referrals, bring in repeat business, and more importantly, I'll get to it. Oh man, I just, I love this class so much. More importantly, <laughs> they're gonna be able to share the, the most important thing you can have in your business, the most important piece of marketing is somebody that really digs what you do, and they're gonna tell other people, whether they refer you or not, Having that brand notoriety is really important. And so our database, by keeping all of these contacts kind of in one place, having a system in place of how we treat them over time, that's what's going to leverage the client experience beyond a single transaction. And so what I think a lot of times what agents do, they look for the quick sale, maybe it's a really great experience. But you think 
think of it as a single transaction. We think about, about it as one paycheck. And I just think that's a mistake. Because you can have, no matter what your business looks like, there's such an opportunity for repeat business, for referrals. And if you look at one client, whether they're buying an $80,000 condo or a $600,000 beautiful single family, they have a lot of people in their own network. And so you're not really just investing in this one client. In every transaction, you're investing into their networks as well. And so one thing that I love, it's really hard to quantify opportunity, right? But one thing that I love, I found this calculator. Do it later, but the hyperlink is in your notes. I found this calculator that kind of quantifies. Oh, I'm sorry. Hi. Oh, sorry. Yeah, see, sneak in there. So there's a couple of these. There you go. It's on the back. There's a couple of these calculators that float around out there. Oh, did you not get my phone? I'm sorry. And you can do this in a couple of ways. Honestly, you can do this with a pen and a piece of paper, but I'm not good with math. So if you have, I just kind of put in our own numbers. If you have the average home price, in Maricopa it's 265, but we're a little closer to 266, 275. So I put that in there. I always like to stay conservative with average commission being two and three quarters, but it's a tough market for some of our buyers out there right now, so sometimes it's closer to two, two and a half percent. And then average broker fee here, we are at 100% uh, commission brokerage, but we still have transaction fees. We have monthly fees, things like that. If you're banking on an average take home commission, you're looking at around 6,500 bucks, right? That's great. That's really exciting. And after 45 days, that's what you look forward to. But if you can leverage the long-term opportunity of that client by putting them in your database, reaching out to them over time, teaching them how to refer you over time. Over the lifetime of your business, my average age of a client is 28, so some of you guys might be different there, some might even be younger. Average time for us in a year is five, that's in Maricopa right now actually for my title rep. In a perfect scenario, perfect storm situation, you could be looking at close like over $100,000 in lifetime commissions. With sellers, that's really easy. Because then when you have listings, you have the opportunity to pre-market those listings and get additional buyer leads off of that. That actually just happened to us. We had a condo listing, $200,000. We got full boat, great, right, 3%. Fantastic. But then you go hard in pre-marketing that listing to your database, to their networks. And we procured two additional leads off of that that are going to buy for another $12,000 on top of this. So once you start kind of doing the math and figuring out how you can find that leverage, those really big opportunity points in your business, the database starts feeling a little important. Who has a database? Who thinks that you really are like systemizing it to its full potential? No. <laughs> but it takes some time, right? And it kind of makes you think like, oh my gosh, if you let the wrong person go, if you let the wrong person slip through the cracks, like what if they join BNI next year and they have this like amazing network? You know, you just never know. There's so much opportunity. I thought this was really fun. I thought this was a really fun exercise just to kind of quantify it because you have a lot of people saying like database, 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 but it's fake. So once you can actually try to put a metric to it. So what are you doing? You're sending your new listings to everybody in your database? For that specific situation or for pre-marketing? Yeah, you just have like I marketed to my database, my... So when we, we have a whole system behind pre-marketing leads or pre-marketing listings that is sending it to our database that's also retargeting with Facebook ads to our database and then their network so we hit our friends our friends of friends and then we also send it out to who we think that buyer would be just on Facebook we go heavy in on Facebook but we also leverage it with our contacts so you can like upload your database to Facebook and do that whole thing there's a lot of ways you can do it though. You can door knock a whole neighborhood, pick up listings. I mean, there are so many different ways. So the power of lifetime value starts and ends with the client experience. The reason for that is like, especially internet leads or open house leads, when they just meet you, it takes a lot of convincing to get them to stay super committed to you. And I think that one thing that we don't really factor into the equation is how addicted consumers are to speed today, right? 
They will do anything to get in the house right away if they see it and it looks good. Especially if that means calling the listing agent instead of you, right? So it, buyers today have more information, they're more empowered than ever, and they have more power to influence your business than ever because of social media, because of review sites like Zillow and Yelp, Facebook. So we really wanna make sure that we're thinking hard about that client experience. So how do we do that? It's all about building in client retention. And client retention starts when you know what's important to your clients, you have those really insightful pieces of valuable information that you're able to build into your systems in order for them to feel like, wow, my is the best, they totally get me, they totally know what's important to me, I'm sticking with them. We were, this is why this is so important, we were out of town this summer for our anniversary trip. And just for a couple of days, we had these newer clients, super great people, they walk into an open house and they try and get poached. Not poached, but you know, the open house agent is doing their job, trying to see if there's any opportunity there. And they turn to the open house agent and they're like, no, Bryce and Stephanie, there are people. Like we've known them for a month. And they're like, nope, nope, there are people. Like that's what you want. And you build that out of knowing what's important to them and then delivering on every aspect. So we start by identifying our ideal client. And these notes are in your packet too, so if you wanna follow along with all the prompts, you can. But you can't build a service-based business without knowing who you're serving. This is one of my favorite activities to do in the real estate business, in our business. Because a lot of what we do is marketing. A lot of what we're doing is putting out Facebook ads, putting out mailers, we're talking to people all the time. We're just, we're putting out all kinds of content for people. And so to really have a strong message, you have to know who you're trying to attract. Who has a niche? Is anyone super niche down? Would you mind sharing? Uh, it's more of a geographic. Okay, yeah. Then I focus on Arrowhead and Northwest Valley. Nice, nice so. little bit up there. So you know that there's like kind of a, a general undercurrent of right. demographic patterns, things like that. Um, kind of similar houses, yeah. similar price points. So when you're thinking about your ideal client, and if you're farming a location like that and putting out postcards, you need to know, kind of have an idea of who's going to get that mailer or who's going to see the ad, what type of home they might be interested in, where they're looking to be. We love working with home buyers, first time home buyers in the Central Phoenix area. So they want to be where it's popping. They want to be where there's good restaurants, great bars, things to do, places where they can walk their young kids. We want to know their interests, right? We want to know what's really appealing to them. This helps also when you're having a conversation early on and you're trying to build that rapport. What do you talk about? How do you connect? We start here. Then we go on to communicating. There are the client experience crosses so many different data points in an experience or during a transaction. Communication is the most important one. We need to tailor the way we communicate to our clients. So how do we do that? How do they want to hear from you? So our people love texting, right? And if we know that we're getting internet leads from a certain type of buyer, we know that we have to have an automated system that's gonna text them right away, or else they're just gonna be looking. They're, they're gone by the time you've ever picked up the phone three minutes later, right? They like speed, they like texting. How often are you reaching out to them? Do they want a high touch experience where you're constantly reaching out to them, seeing what, the, what you can do for them? Or do they want you know, a little, little more space? And then where are you showing up for them, right? So are you sending videos? Are you sending videos that are gonna direct back to them on Facebook? Are you sending them bomb bomb emails? That kind of thing. If you're thinking about like the last couple of clients that you've had this year, you can probably kind of start imagining like what worked with them and what didn't. And then we want to think about what we're communicating to them, right? What do they need from us? What's going to be the most valuable information to them? So for us, we get a lot of the same questions. We work with a lot of first time home buyers. They're all asking the same thing. How do we get started? Who pays for what? When does the inspection happen? How 
important it is to write an offer right away? Does that mean I can't back out? They have all of the same kind of questions. We need to set all of those expectations. So what expectations do they have and what expectations do you need to give to them? What referrals are they going to need, right? So if you're kind of farming an area that happens to have a great price point, you might still need a good handyman or somebody that knows how to do small updates, things like that for your sellers who are, are wanting to get the most return on their home. Just kind of think about that. Or maybe a lot of your network is kind of, you know, lower income. A lot of our people are just getting out of college and their first job, some might need credit repair. You might need referrals for that. And then timeline updates. Everybody wants to feel empowered. All clients are so used to being able to Google something and instantaneously get information. So how can you empower your clients and give them as many resources along the way as they can to where they feel confident in the transaction and they're not constantly texting you in the middle of the night wondering, oh, what do you want me to do with your price off? Whatever it is. And you can automate so much of this. You can automate so much of this with your CRM. You can set task reminders to remind you to reach out to them at a certain point in the timeline, whatever it may be. All of this really can be automated, which is very fun. And then how do we appreciate our ideal clients, right? So how do you love on your people? How do you give them a wow experience? So we think of closing gifts, we think of birthday programs, long term. We think of client parties, that's also a long term workflow. We think of pop buys. What you're giving them matters. We know how fun it is when we give our clients a gift and they put it on social media. That's a pretty big piece of influence, right? People have built their businesses on that. For closing gifts, I wouldn't I love I love branded knives and cutting boards and stuff. I think they're fun. I would never give that as a closing gift. Um, I would give it as a different gift or maybe part of the gift, but it would just not feel authentic for me. Our people really love local goods, right? They love really like kind of artsy, local, maybe like Arizona themed stuff. So we kind of gravitate towards a lot of that stuff, which is fun. For birthday programs, we wouldn't just send them a card, right? We would send them something that they can share at their office because all of our people work full time in offices. We'll, share, we'll send them a box of 30 of like the best cookies that one of our friends, that's a company that's super good, right? Something that can be shared, something that feels authentic. Client parties, we're having client parties at places our people like to hang out. We love doing client parties at Oso or Lucy's at the Orchard or something like that. Something super fun, something super central. Popeyes, koozies are so good for Popeyes. You can get like 100 branded koozies for 80 bucks. And they're super cute, and they're super fun, and you, people love koozies. But like, you know, what would your clients like? So then we want to take all of that information. I'm going really fast, so if you guys have anything you want to add or share or questions, let me know. So then we want to take all of this and apply it to our contact to close system. And it might, oh wait, actually, I think I have it here. I'm just gonna have to steal some of these notes. So in qualifying a lead, these are in your notes. You have all these different steps, right? We need to follow up with them. We need to set the appointment. We need to get them in front of us, especially if they're coming in online or from a referral source. We need to get in front of them, right? But how are we going to do that in a way that's very convincing and feels very authentic to our leads, right? Increase our conversions. We have our buyer and seller consultation knowing their biggest questions, knowing what's important to them, being prepared so that we nail those consultations, we get the rate we want on the listings, whatever it is, we need to be prepared for that. And then here I put listing pre-marketing, so important. There's so much opportunity with that. For transaction overview and next steps, we get super detailed with that. We send, um, we send our emails and we also give them a lot of resources. We have like branded resource flyers that we send to our clients that have like the transaction timeline and 10 steps or just any kind of thing that they can refer to later so they feel empowered, so that they feel like they understand what's going on. 
Over here, we're also sending listings, we're arranging showings, we're writing offers, we're making sure we're available to them. We're at the entire way, letting them know that we hear their needs because we're listening and we can anticipate. And then in escrow, we're doing our best to connect with all parties that they need, right? We're scheduling those pivotal emails that go out during transaction timelines. We are beginning to teach them how to refer us. Hey, how's my service been? I'm having a good time. Do you know anybody who's also looking to buy or sell? It's really hard to educate our people to refer us sometimes. And then we have close and close close. So we're ordering the closing of the week before. We are scheduling a time to hand over keys and take a picture with them so that we can put it on social media and they can put it on social media and then we can mail it back to them a year later for the anniversary and say, hey, remember when we did this? And then we're gonna send a review request and ask for referrals again. But we always wanna make sure that we're getting that review, leveraging as much of that opportunity as we can, right? Does anybody have a really good email for asking for reviews? I feel like I finally figured it out. Yeah. So we have like four places where we show up. We have Yelp, we have Google, Zillow, Facebook. We also have Redfin, Realtor.com, but we take the most important ones and we put hyperlinks in the emails on the day after it closes or maybe two days after it closes in case, depending on when they move in, when we know they have some downtime. And then we say, hey, please refer us. You know, niceties, thank you, so great, whatever, congratulations, refer us here. And then all of the links are there so they can just there it goes automatically. It's important. You don't think about those little things sometimes because you're <laughs> running to get your check. <laughs> and then we want to apply those concepts to post close, right? So then we're moving to the database. We're adding them to the birthday program. We're adding them automatically to the invite list for you can just tag them in CRMs for this. Add them to the invite list for events and parties. We're adding them to the mailing program. So we're hitting them on holidays with send out cards, right? Mm -hmm. Monthly or quarterly newsletters. Newsletters destroy me. I don't know if anybody's figured out a way to make newsletters more palatable, but they're just really handy. People love them. People love getting something fun that's not scammy in the mail. But I just can't figure out a way to make it not hurt so much. <laughs> I don't know if it's like the folding envelopes or what. Um, quarterly RPRs or semi-annual RPRs, really good, but we're putting reminders in our system to do all of that. And then we're remarketing via social media and MLS. So we change their MLS trip to run once a month, maybe every two weeks, just give them an update of what's going on in the neighborhood. And then we're adding them to our social media marketing campaigns. We're at least adding them into Facebook, right? So we can comment on their posts and stuff. We're at least adding them onto Instagram if they're there. But if you have a really thoughtful ad campaign for your database, and anytime you have a business, you have to make every dollar work like $100. And remarketing via Facebook ads to your database can cost you maybe like 20 bucks a month. So worth it, so worth it. And then asking for the referral. Right? They need to be taught to refer us. It does not come naturally to people who are not in sales. If somebody doesn't own their business like we know, they're just not going to understand the importance of a referral. So opportunities are strongest right in line with the transaction, right? That's why we want to build in those emails asking for referrals along those milestone transactions, transaction updates. We want to have conversations with them. One thing that works really well for us is after we close, or if the transaction is going really well and we don't think anything bad is going to happen, we'll have them over to our house for dinner, right? And we'll just chat, have a great time, bond over a great meal because I'm a great cook sometimes. And that's a really great time to have a conversation where their guard is down, they're not worried about the transaction, and say, hey, it's really important that we get referrals and this is why. This is what it means for our business. Don't you like our dogs? Don't you like our dogs to eat? <laughs> That kind of thing. What if we have the food? We have four dogs. It's a lot of food. And then we have our long-term systems that have asks embedded in the communications, right? So if we're popping by, we're asking for a referral. If 
being kind of direct. Do you invite all your clients to that? Most of them, most of the ones we like. <laughs> if um, I can't think of one client, I wouldn't. In, I'm. We get invited to our clients' weddings, their baby showers. Like once, once you're um, once you're here, you're in my clutches. <laughs> We're a part of life. Like that's that's what we want, though. Yes. Isn't that just a prime example of kind of knowing who your ideal customer is, though, and just marketing to them and I mean that's a result of what you guys are doing to me that just screams that hey this works thank you if you're close with your clients or if you're not then you're not attracting the right person yeah. you really want to do business with and that's the thing so when we left finance we had this salary it was 2014 for one so the world was just barely getting back on its axle axis and we had the salaries that benefits we had PTO and we just like one day we just didn't want it anymore and we put in our two weeks and that was it. Like there was no runway time. And so we knew we were giving up a lot, but instead of getting super scrappy like a smart person probably would, we decided that we were going to run our business the way we wanted to run it. And if you don't want to play by our rules, we'll fire you. Because life, like, it's not so much about the money, right? 148000 per client is great. And that's a great metric to run towards. But if you can't enjoy your time, you're not going to do any of this well. You're not going to be convincing when you ask for a referral. You're not going to be authentic when you wish somebody a happy birthday. And so you're kind of just like working against yourself, right? So figure out who it is that you know you can really serve well and authentically and a, a very high caliber of service because that is going to pay dividends. We have um, we have a colleague here. You guys know Rick McCone? He has a super fun niche, and his niche are downsizing seniors. And he's built his and it's and it's you know he's in that demographic, so he relates to them very well. He understands their concerns. He understands their needs. And he's because of that, he's able to build out these incredibly robust video series that target these people, but also give them so much value. He's able to serve them with more compassion than I could. I could serve somebody very well but in that situation, but I don't know all the things that they're thinking. I haven't spent the time researching it. I haven't spent the time acclimating myself to that kind of situation. So like, that's why it's important, right? Sorry, rant. Passionate. Does anybody else have any more questions about this? Has anybody else figured out a really great way to ask for that referral that just fires back? I think it's something we can all work on for sure. It helps at client parties when there's food and drinks and everybody's having a good time. <laughs> okay, then allow the rinse and repeat, right? You don't want to let one client fall through the cracks. You want every single one to have an amazing experience because it only takes one to go on to Yelp or your Facebook business page or Zillow and give you a one star review and say you were the worst because you had no idea what was going on, you weren't organized, you didn't know their needs, right? Ask yourself, what does your client want? What's most important to them? Arm yourself with these strong client insights at the beginning of a new relationship and then carry it on far beyond the transaction and you'll be in business for a long time. I did super fast on my guys. This is a 45 minute class. <laughs> That's a 45 minute class. Does anyone have any questions or does anyone have any um, any examples that they could share where this really worked for them? <laughs> I feel bad, you guys are gonna be hanging out now for a while. <laughs> well, I think just being clear on what you want, who your ideal client is, there's a lot of power in that. I agree. Just knowing what you want and putting it out there, the universe or whatever you want to call it, is going to provide. So, I'm such a universal junkie. Yeah. I agree with that 100%. Yeah. How many people have like written ads before and put them on Facebook and like hope that they turn something out, yeah, or or just a really or just a Facebook post like, hey, I'm in real estate. Look at this beautiful new open house. Mm -hmm. Come see me, and then they get like two <laughs> likes. Yeah. yeah, like that's the difference. I had this. Crazy post that did like a thousand likes on Instagram. I don't like ever, ever get that. 
but I gave tips on how to fill out your backyard, right? How to landscape a backyard and do it on a budget. Okay, a lot of my first time home buyers, they're a little budget conscious, right? Sometimes, not all the times, but a lot of times. And they want to make sure that they're being, you know, like responsible, not putting in a lush garden with grass that's going to require tons of water every month. Right, so how do you do that? I put on just like a simple little post. It was like a before and after, after backyard, you know, whatever backyard, and put it on Instagram. And I woke up this morning and it had over a thousand likes. And I was like, I don't even have that big of an audience. I don't have that many followers to justify that. But what had happened, you can look at my insights, people were sharing it, people were saving it, people were doing things. And it's because it was like actionable tips. So what does that tell me? Our people love actionable tips. Guess what I'm going to be posting <laughs> next Tuesday at 5.45, just like I did yesterday. <laughs> Another actionable tip. Maybe I caught them after they got home, right before they were about to eat dinner, and there was a good time to eat, right? But you just take all those little data points, you build them into your business, and then you action on them over and over and over again until you get lucky. Not lucky, but lucky, and it turns around. Well, thanks, guys. I need to slow down my talking. This is this is the first time I did this class though, so that's I guess not the first time, but so yeah, where do you find your savior then? Like how's that Our, oh for that house? Yeah. Our people love local. Our people love local art and local craftsmen, so we found a stager that does um, they gather art and materials and furniture from people who do it locally in town with excellence and then stage the house with that. So sometimes it makes sense to do that in that neighborhood it did for that house. He's asking, I'm sorry guys, he's asking about a house. It's listed right now, 525 in the Central Corridor if anybody <laughs> wants to be a buyer. <laughs> but it's a beautiful house, we just renovated it. I think it's the best renovation we've ever done, maybe um, aside from our house that we live in. But um, it's a gorgeous home and it really like, attracts that type of buyer who's like young professional, maybe young family, enough space for the kids. So we staged it in a way, we had like a nursery staged, we had two separate living areas staged, we had like a little cocktail lounge staged in part of the house because that area is known for its restaurants and bars and people love that kind of thing. And then we brought in the stager who does all local art, local goods, like beautiful local furniture and stuff. So that's just, that's actually, thanks for asking because that's another good example of So guys, Jermaine holds our house open, holds our listing open this weekend. We're out of town this weekend. For the weekend, for my husband's birthday, Jermaine's holding it open. And then on his way to then go show our clients a couple of properties, he gets hit in his car. Like, oh my gosh. The, it was, I'm sorry, it was kind of <laughs> jarring. And it wasn't your fault. And it was like a very clear, like not his fault. And then you tie the, the door together with a cord. Is this right? Did I hear this right? Our clients are raving about it. He ties the door back together with an ex, like a charging cord and goes and shows our clients' houses. Oh my God. And our clients are like, our clients are like, thank you so much for having Jermaine show us. He was so nice. Client experience. <laughs> but they couldn't believe it. They were like, oh my gosh. They're like, we couldn't, we, we didn't have to see it. They would have called a listing agent. Those are clients, those are newer internet lead clients. They would have called a listing agent. So it was like, maybe not, but you know. Mm -hmm. It's not something I would have put up a chance. So like, thank you very much. It's very, very cool. That's what it takes. I mean, the door's flying open. We're like, all right, let's just tie it. <laughs> I just couldn't even imagine. That's my testimonial video right there. Yeah. Literally, we're on our last, like, we're picking up the last open house sign, so we're making a U-turn on that, um, where the light rail's at, and somebody makes a U-turn, and it's just like, that's cool. awful. So that's what you need to put on social, that's what goes on Facebook. I'll be waving for more clients. Yeah, you take yes. a picture next to it, <laughs> <laughs> with a little, a like, idea. thumbs up, like, guys, let's do this, 
it, I know it's Wednesday, I have to tell you about this crazy thing that happened this weekend, and I'm just now getting to the point where I can share about it. And it's like, that would be a, an awesome piece of social media. Mm -hmm. That'd be great. But then it's like the crash, and then trans people, they don't put pictures online. I know, it's like... so hard. <laughs> but, but I think your circumstance might still be in your favor. The trans people, they just don't want to pay out any money. Okay, like... then as soon as you get that result, <coughs> Then do it. I put it up there. <laughs> Does anyone have anything else? Not necessarily on the topic, but okay. as far as the recording, but um, she might have turned it off by now because yeah. she knows I'm like oh, just no, hanging it's out. It's on red, so you're still recording. Oh really? Okay. <laughs> Get back in the thing then. So it's motion. Oh, so okay. like as you move, it follows you, and as soon as you get out of the frame, it like shuts off. I've seen it on Facebook before. It's it's a really cool piece of tech. So we're a new group have coming over to my home group. Um, oh, yay! So I've been feeling you. it for I've been in mostly for like three years now. Okay. But um, just trying to get familiar. You said he was doing open house. Do you open at other agencies in your open house, or specific things you can call and talk and chat or what? So there's so we we, we keep it in the brokerage. Right, and I'm in your brokerage. Yeah. Now, oh, it's so. done. It's official. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh huh. Just let us know. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, when you do that, so my home group is pretty collaborative. Um, that's one of the things we love about this culture. So when you do that, like you just do the MLS little search and search by by company. Have yeah. you ever done that? Probably a couple before I get there. Yeah. I mean yeah. that's what I used to do with my other brokers. But yeah. So if you guys haven't done this, you just search by company mm -hmm. listings. Pick one on a good area. Pick one that has time on market. Doesn't matter to me when we hold open houses. It's always like how much, how many times has it like been held open recently? Yeah. Um, it's a beautiful listing, so. I'll look at time on market and how many open houses and how many turns. And yeah. Always the turns, which is why that one's such a good one. It's like Seventh Avenue, Missouri, so it's very just easy yeah. to get into. I just come from a brokerage where they just didn't allow us to select your own team. And that's it. We really very few teams would allow you to do your own, your own open house. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Sometimes it's hard to get a response because everybody's busy. A lot of times we get caught up with responding to our clients. Um, we're, we try to be pretty responsive, um, especially if it's like on socials and stuff. It's just easier because notifications come in. Um, well, so we have all of our social media notifications turned off. Um, can't handle it. I will, I just don't need the distraction. I get onto Facebook at like very certain times of the day. Beyond that, I don't have time for it. Notifications for that are off. Yeah. It'll change your life. It'll change your life for sure. So we did that, like Facebook, Instagram, whatever that is, any of it that we're on. Um, and then email, I stopped people watching, but my email notifications are off. Um, <laughs> like there were specific times that we go in just so that we keep everything organized and streamlined. So sometimes you need to use up the phone a couple times is my point. Um, I did a video about this. On YouTube, if you guys haven't seen it, I use. Um, I think that's the most commonly asked question in real estate. Um, short answer is follow up boss. I think it's the best thing ever created on planet Earth. But yeah, but if you're on a budget, I think Lions Desk is amazing. I mean, Lions Desk, like it's so good. And then what I also love about Lion Desk is that there's a lot of templates that you can buy online. Yes. Um, like a 10 packet email template for $99 or whatever it is. There's a lot of that stuff that you can find, um, but it's whatever you're going to work with, yeah. right? That's what I've always heard. It doesn't matter. It's just whatever doesn't matter. you're going to work on. Yeah, no magic bullet. So yeah. we do a lot of, I'm all in on Facebook ads. So we do a lot of lead gen, follow up boss, marries really well for a platform. That was the only reason we used to follow up boss. Um, my database is also in an Excel spreadsheet. Easier to make calls. So I can just go down and do it. Easier for me to upload to a dialer if I have to. Easier to upload for mailers. Easier to upload for Facebook ads. So I kind of hit, I have like a master list. Okay. And then I break a, it down. Do you do a fresh export then when you're ready to do something? Or how do you keep Typically. it? Typically. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'll do that a lot of times. Um, there's no other way. I mean, you can do it in Facebook where you add to a specific audience. Um, but I go through mine so often and I'm changing people so often based on their, um, because I can, 
because I can do so many different things at a certain point, I just need to have everything organized, I have them tagged. And so um, I'm really afraid of like sending um, a seller ad to a buyer. I don't know why, it's just, or I'm really afraid of sending a client appreciation party to somebody who's like <coughs> not invited. <laughs> I don't know, I'm just like really anal about it. So I always do it fresh. And it's probably not the best thing to do, but that's what works for me and I get it done, so that's all that matters. And that's kind of the key to CRM is, are you gonna use it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're all good if you use them. That's the eternal question. What's the best CRM? Yeah. There isn't one for everybody. Follow Boss is really good because you can grow into it. So Follow Boss has a lot. It has the API key, which is basically a little piece of software where you can plug it into all these other apps and stuff that you might use. So if you do mailers on Mailchimp, right. mm -hmm. Follow Boss integrates really well. Mm -hmm. If you do mailers on like send out call up cards, Follow Boss does really well and it mirrors with Zapier. Zapier is an, a software that will allow me literally to connect and automate anything from Follow Boss into like any other app in the world. Yeah. It's like ridiculous. So I need like robust functionality just because I like to make things overkill. Right. <laughs> cool. Well thank you guys. I really appreciate you. you sticking around with me. Um, if you're here for the 3 o'clock class, you've got 13 minutes to freshen up and do whatever you might need to do. And if you guys have any questions, all my stuff is on the bottom of your note paper that I give you. Something happened that was outside of anybody's control. So we did write the offer, but then we had to rescind it. We had to rescind it. She, she won't be a fit buyer for a while.